Welcome to Wadsworth History on Film, a program presented by the Wadsworth Area Historical Society and designed to record the oral history of Wadsworth for posterity. I'm Cesar Crini, your host, and our guest today is a very well-known figure in Wadsworth, Bob Kalibitzer. Bob, Bob, not only are you well-known, but your father is very well-known mm -hmm. in Wadsworth. He was a butcher at the IGA mm -hmm. store for years and years and years. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I never knew his name was Kalibitzer until I went to school with you, I believe. Uh, we always call him Corny. Right. Right. How did he get that name anyway? Well, just the nickname is actually his real name is Robert Cornell. Robert Cornell. Robert Cornell. Robert it's not Cornell. Cornelius then. No, Robert Cornell. And Corny became his name. And he just got a nickname when he was very young. The, the boys he ran around with started calling him Corny. Corny. So we're gonna, we're going to um, mm -hmm. uh, talk about him in a little bit, but okay. we'll have to find out a little bit about you because you also have a, a very fine um, a legacy to, mm -hmm. to share with us um, uh, many years mm -hmm. in the bank and um, uh, you probably have had more millions of dollars passed through yeah. your hands and <laughs> I've not, seen a lot of it <laughs> and did, 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 did much of those millions ever stop there was no, <laughs> no continue pass on through right they just, we they threw just, that money around just like it was uh, <laughs> handling uh, supplies that's right exactly yeah. tell us a little bit about uh, when you were born and uh, where you were born and okay. your siblings and all of that Okay, I was born in, uh, here in Wadsworth on uh, April 1st, 1936. 1936. I'm here at Wadsworth, the, the old uh, Wadsworth Hospital. That means that you're 63 years, you'll be 63, I'll be 63 years 63 old. I'm April soon. Fool Baby. I'm mm -hmm. an April Fool Baby. Right, yeah. And um, who, who are your parents? We know about Robert Cornell. Okay, Robert Cornell, Cornell Calbetzer. was my father, then my mother was Ruth Cox Calbetzer. Now, which Cox was this? Uh, her father was John Cox. Not uh, related to, um, so that we can get this established. Mm -hmm. I know this. I know the answer to this, but we'll get it established. Not related to uh, Tom Cox and that group. Well, uh, Tom would been. Uh, he is a cousin, first cousin of mine. The first so, cousin. Yes. So his uh, his uh, father, Forrest Cox, was my mother's brother. Brother. Right. Okay. Yeah. So then we are related. Is related. Okay. Yes, well, uh -huh. That's fine. Yes. Uh -huh. So Tom Cox then is your first cousin. That's correct. And. Yeah. Um, and your, um, well, then she obviously was born here in Wadsworth too, wasn't she? Yes, she was born, yes, yeah, right here in Wadsworth. Huh? Who was her father? Her father was John Cox. John Cox. John Cox. I don't remember much of him because he passed away uh, back in 1944, and I was only about eight years old mm -hmm. at that time. But uh, I think he worked the uh, injector for a number of years, and the last I can remember was he was uh, a janitor here for the... Uh, City of Wadsworth for the uh, City Hall. Oh, really? I remember taking him in on Sunday night and he had to stoke up the um, boiler. The, the boiler. Coal, the, mm -hmm. the coal mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. yeah, for so, heaven's sakes. Now, so John Cox was, was his uh, name. Yeah. John Cox then, well, your grandfather then, mm -hmm. was a, a custodian at City Hall. Yes, yes. And where was City Hall at that time, do you remember? <clears throat> okay, that uh, right, uh, well, it was right next to the First National Bank, or mm -hmm. Huntington National Bank as we know it right now. So the, to the uh, north of it, right. 50 years from now, if none of that stuff is there, we'll right. have to identify it as about, um, what, 1,000 feet or so right. north right. of the square mm -hmm. on the east side of the road. Mm -hmm. And that building has been raised now. Yes, that's correct. And uh, there's a new city hall. Right. Mm -hmm. And the First National Bank uh, was right next door to the old city hall. That is correct. I remember yeah. that correctly. Mm -hmm. um, what about your grandmother then? Do you, was she a Wadsworth girl too? Yeah. Uh, I don't know where she was born. Her name was uh, Edith Cox. And you don't remember her maiden name? I don't remember her maiden mm -hmm. name, no. She passed away in 1935. So, well, right. you weren't even Very, born yet. No, I wasn't even born yet. And then, unfortunately, in our family, we never uh, discussed too much about uh, our family heritage. You know, I think that most mm -hmm. of the older families didn't. Yeah. Uh, I've heard so many people your age and mm -hmm. older say, and my age and older, I should say, uh, that uh, very little was ever spoken mm -hmm. in the family about, you know, the heritage and mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, probably because children were more or less property rather mm -hmm. than um, uh, equals. Now the children know everything, the genealogy right. and everything else, but they didn't know it at that time. Uh, my mother's side of the family uh, came from Pilver, Pennsylvania Dutch. Mm -hmm. So they come out of the uh, Of course, the name Kalibetzer is also a Pennsylvania Dutch name. Yes, too, right, yeah. You a bet. German mixed into mm -hmm. it, right. A lot of German. <laughs> yeah. that. Did any, anyone in your family speak German? Not to my knowledge. Not to no. your knowledge. I heard anybody speak German now. Your father was a very up person all yes. the time. Oh, yes, yes. And did not look Pennsylvania Dutch. No. Didn't have the, the, the sternness. Of, no, no, right. And there's nothing wrong with that sternness, but there's a, there's a mm -hmm. certain sternness, I think, about. But my mother strictly was, uh, you know, 
had traits of Pennsylvania Dutch because a very lived a very simple life and mm -hmm. her style of cooking and so forth very plain. Very good. Plain. Yeah, very <laughs> yes, very good. Very uh, they cooked with very slow cooking and very you know, good cooking, wonderful they, meals. Yeah, right. my neighbor. All of my neighbors were Pennsylvania Dutch. Oh, there, yeah. And honest to heavens, they made meals that would turn a king on. Yeah, right. Just really <laughs> great. Tell us then about your early days in school, where you went to school, what you did, and who okay. were your friends, who, with whom did you play, <laughs> where did you live, um, neighbors, and okay. all that kind of a thing. All right, we uh, were born and raised in 133 Euclid Avenue. Which, of course, at that time was a paved street? Unpaved. Unpaved. Right? Unpaved, yeah. I can remember when it was only uh, uh, just a uh, dead end bomb in the hill between uh, High Street and West Street. Right. As a matter know. of fact, uh, not probably not mm -hmm. more than 20 houses, if that. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Who were your neighbors? Uh, neighbors across the street was Cleo and Irene Wolf. Yes, Cleo Wolf was a jeweler. Right. No, 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 no. Uh, Dry right. goods. Dry goods, that's yeah. right, yes. Right, yes. Yeah. Wolf's dry goods, that's yeah. what I'm sorry, yeah. yeah. And there was um, um, Forrest Wolf was a jeweler. Right, yeah. Forrest Wolf. And then down the street was Irene and George Four. Four. That would have been Mrs. Irene Wolf's mother mm -hmm. and father. And, and Four is spelled F O R R F L R E R, isn't it? Yes, well, that is correct. Right? F O R E R. F O R R, yeah, right. And there was a um, red four, too, wasn't there? I don't recall that name. Well, I think yeah, that, yeah. But I'm not sure whether that's from Wadsworth or somewhere yeah. else. Helen Gable was related to a, a red forer. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then across the street we had uh, uh, Surface, so the Kenneth and... Um, Kenneth Surface? Kenneth Surface mm -hmm. lived across mm -hmm. the street, built a house mm -hmm. across the street. So when I was growing and then... Uh, be Jim Surface and... Um, uh, his father, yeah, Jim, Jim Surface's Surface's father. Surface's father, and, and his sister, who was yeah. um, Judy. Judy Surface, yeah. Right, and Don Street was across street, Caddy Corner was uh, uh, Bill Lieberth. Bill and Alice Lieberth. Right, exactly, yeah. And uh, Both, uh, well, uh, Alice is gone. Bill yes. is still alive. I think. Bill is still alive. I think right. He lives yeah. in Michigan with his kids or something. Is that right? Yeah, I am seen for quite some time. Mm -hmm. But that's the only neighbors I could recall because <clears throat> we was actually the first house on Euclid Avenue from High Street. High Street. At that point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Later on, there was a couple of houses built between High Street and our our house there. And where did you go to school then? So I uh, went to school here in Wadsworth. Went to Lincoln School, grade school, and then uh, went to the. Uh, High school down was still uh, still down at the or at the old high school. Was. The old high school were, is. Remember some of the teachers and some of the playmates. Pardon? Hmm? Remember the teachers and oh, some yes. of the playmates. Oh yes, some of the playmates. My uh, kindergarten teacher with was Miss Wells. Oh, everyone, Miss Wells. <laughs> Wells. And oh, I wish she were still alive. We love it. I wish she were still alive. You're right, I do too. Yes, yeah, and I, and first grade I had uh, June Brenneman. June Brenneman. June Brenneman. That name hasn't come up yet. No, it's Harry, That's yeah. the first time. Mm -hmm. I wonder, well, she wasn't here very long then. No, I don't remember mm -hmm. much of her. Uh, oh, boy. Yeah, and then the second grade was uh, Lucille Adams. Mm -hmm. I had Lucille Adams. And the third grade was, of course, Roberta Lee. Mm -hmm. well, Roberta Lee, who was um, Liberta Coleman. That is correct. Maiden name was Coleman. Mm -hmm. And the fourth grade, I had Gail Farner. Farmer. Gail Farmer. Gail Farmer. Yes, mm-hmm. And, and Gail Farmer was the wife of um, the band director, was he? I think so. Yes, There's, right. Yes, I think so. They were here just for a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. And then I had uh, fifth grade Mary Blau. Mm -hmm. And sixth grade, of course, uh, Earl Joachim. Everyone had Earl Joachim <laughs> in the sixth grade, too. Yeah, right. right. So. And uh, seventh grade had Doris Boffman, of course, for, yes, for art. art. Mm -hmm. And uh, Who never aged. And somebody I don't remember is uh, R.A. Boyd. Uh, but he was a shop teacher. Shop teacher, mm -hmm. okay. I had him and Mary Jordan. I had Mary mm -hmm. Jordan. Mary Jordan she was, was a very fine young lady. We, uh, she took it very a lot of Mary Jordan kids. was um, a math teacher, was she not? Or yes. social studies? Math or social studies? I think math, yes. I think math. Yes, and I she think. lived out in Weavertown. Uh, on the County Line Road, I believe. Oh, somewhere out in there, I remember. Uh, she had a, um, she was a little on the, uh, she had a kind of a, a hairdo that was mm -hmm. uh, uh, kind of not in a bun necessarily, but uh, right, very a little short, mm -hmm. stocky type of lady. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes, very much. Mm -hmm. And then I had uh, J. L. Falber. I don't recall Falber. Falber. F. A. U. B. E. R. That name hasn't come up I once in the program. Right. Of course, then uh, getting into the junior high, uh, Richard Krauss and. Uh, the oh, Krauss. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, what a tremendous person he was. Yes, so, yes. He came. Uh, Dick Krauss came in 1946 or seven. Mm. And at the time, um, he was um, 
I guess the girls just swooned over him because he was tall and very athletic. And mm. <laughs> but uh, the the nicest part about Dick Krause was his personality. Yes, he was just a great, is. great person. Yes. Yeah. And then he what he became a real estate agent, didn't he? That is correct. Right. So that he, he could make enough money to raise his family. <laughs> yeah. And teachers didn't make much money. They still don't. Well, no, they no, but right, yeah. they did. But they don't didn't didn't make much money in those days. He was a fine and, uh, oh, just basketball coach. Oh, a great person. Coach. He has. Um, he has children still in mm -hmm. Wadsworth. And as a matter of fact, Dick himself still lives in Wadsworth. I tried to get him on the program, he wouldn't come. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't come. But um, his uh, son lives in Wadsworth, and he has a daughter too, doesn't he? Um, yes, I'm not, I don't recall what her yeah, name is. Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And then I had, uh, of course, uh, Harvey Grunwald and yes. Russell Dome for uh, Industrial Arts. Right. And uh, Rex, of course, Rex McElvain is mm -hmm. mad. And of course, we all had Mr. Huntsberger, Hunk. Everybody had <laughs> Hunk. Everybody had Hunk. And uh, I had a Robert Weaver for English. Bob Weaver. Bob Weaver. Yes, yes, he became a principal in Barberton at Is one time. Is that right? Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Bob Weaver, yes. Yeah, and of course, I, we had uh, uh, Bob McCafferty. Yes, he was a uh, Bugs, as we call Bugs him. Bugs McCafferty, because yes. he was a. The biology teacher. His yes, wife right. Helen is still living in Wadsworth. Yes, right. Uh -huh. She was Very a teacher fine, at Overlook for years. A well, fine, I remember fine him, teacher. You know, walking down the hall about uh, fast as he could go. You yes, know? he <laughs> always walked fast. Yes, right. nice, nice person. Might I really liked him. Um, his wife um, uh, Lucille, uh, not Lucille. I'm sorry. Um, mm. Mm. Yes, McCafferty. <laughs> Helen, yeah. Helen, 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 Helen. Yes. Oh, uh, yes. she'll understand. that We all have the same problem. Right. <laughs> Helen McCafferty. <laughs> I was a third grade teacher, I believe, at um, hmm. uh, Overlook School. And at hmm. the time, I was at the university. And I had some student teachers. And one of them was with her. Oh. And this student teacher was one that I didn't think would, would want to um, really go forward with teaching. But Helen McCafferty inspired her. And she became a very, very fine teacher. Very so yes, we're indebted uh, to Helen McCafferty that. for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember the, the, visiting her and so forth. <laughs> and she was just a fine yeah. person. Well, then I had, uh, of course, Rosemary Gilbert. Gilbert, uh, Gilbert French. Yeah, yeah right. Mm -hmm. And uh, Barbara, at that time, was Armstrong, Armstrong and Schaefer. Schaefer, right. Yeah, and uh, both taught, English. and the husband taught, too. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Husband taught, too. And uh, Gordon Hildebrand. Yes, he died in an automobile crash. Right, exactly. In our and his wife right. did, too. He was our class advisor at the yeah. time. Of the nice, class. He, he taught English. Wife. Yeah, taught English. Uh, Luc uh, Louise Hildebrand taught mm -hmm. Spanish, and she also became the assistant principal. Mm -hmm. And then they were killed in an automobile crash. It was horrible. And Kingsley Sears, we had for music. Had psychology at that point. Yeah. Psychology and music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, so those are about the uh, teachers I can recall through. Oh, that's wonderful. School. You have a good memory of those teachers. Let me <laughs> ask some questions about mm -hmm. the playmates during your early days then. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, one that I very uh, close was uh, Dave Schaefer. Dave Schaefer. Dave Schaefer. Of course, he's a dentist. Dentist, and, and he is the brother to Bob Schaefer. Bob Schaefer, right, yeah. Uh, on whose grandparents' property we are sitting at the present time. Right. Uh, and I dare say, not with the blessings of the Schaefers, <laughs> because uh, the land was taken from the Schaefers yes, by eminent domain. Right. But nonetheless, uh, we are here, mm -hmm. and we're grateful you know, for this opportunity. We spent a lot of time down there. The time was the Schaefer's Pond in behind the property, especially right. if you think about that the other day. About in the wintertime, we, uh, I don't, we used to wear out a set of ice skates during the wintertime, you know. Yeah. And, uh, now, Schaefer's at the time lived on High Street. That is correct, yeah. Which is up the road from where you were living. Yes, or down the road, right, yeah. Down the road, you're right, right south, right, right south Closer where you were living, yeah. that's right. Gotten, right yes. And behind their house then was the pond. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so we spent a lot of time down there playing. Mm -hmm. And so he was, uh, yeah. Dave was your, yeah. your your friend. He's a yeah. dentist in Akron. Right, yes. And uh, another one was uh, Robert Good. He Bobby was, Good, Bob Bobby Good, Good. Yeah, yeah, lived on Don, Woodland Avenue, 300 Woodland Avenue. His, Don, his father was Don Good. Don Good, wife was um, Catherine. Catherine, right. Catherine, yes, K-T-H-R-Y-N, uh -huh. Kaler, right. K-O-E-H-L-E-R. Right. Catherine Kaler Good. Okay. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, both are gone now. Mm -hmm. I have not seen Bob Good. Do you know where he might be? Well, last I, uh, he's living in uh, Bricksville. But he's also uh, Bob Go or uh, Don Good, the father, mm -hmm. uh, was uh, president or vice president of Sterling Linder Davis right. and then uh, Polsky's, Polsky's yes. and all of that. And I think that Bob has followed in his footsteps. Yes, he was. Right. Yes. Yeah, so, huh, and I what is he doing? Him. With whom was he working now? Do you know? Uh, it was. Uh, one of the big department stores, I don't know what it's Kaufman's. It's not uh, Catherine Good, it's Kathleen. Kathleen Good. Kathleen, Kathleen Good. Kathleen Kaler Good. Right. Uh, Kathleen Kaler's parents lived 
um, at the intersection of Durling Drive and Silver Creek was right. uh, before they made that great big curve in there mm -hmm. right on the railroad track, within 20 feet of the railroad track. They call that Doyle's Crossings because mm -hmm. Kathleen Kaler's mother was Mary Doyle from Doylestown. Oh, okay. And they call, they call that Doyle's Crossings. I can remember uh, a lot of Sunday afternoons. Of course, this was before the stores were open on Sundays. So. Oh, boy. And uh, when he was president of uh, Polsky's in Akron, mm -hmm. uh, he always took us in, on, uh, especially around the holidays, and we played with the toys, with mm. the old toy department and so forth. So we bought the trains well, and when he was doing some office work and so forth. When, when we bought those toys and we bought used toys. We bought used toys, you're right. Bob Calabetzer and uh, <laughs> Bob Good. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, toys. Wow. Uh, then uh, one of the other close friends I had was Eugene Staub. Gene. We, Gene we, Staub, we, yeah, yes, he's all, dead now. Right. Uh, he, uh, tragic uh, accident. Very, very tragic. Gene yes. died in a <coughs> cave-in. They were digging a ditch uh, down in Clearview Acres. That's correct. Right. And uh -huh. I told the story before in this program, and it probably bears repeating again. The previous day that he, before he was killed, uh, he was installing some a pipeline um, for, for water at, at my place. Mm. And um, I wanted to um, dig a small trench and put a, a um, drainage tile there to go to the um, uh, to the road mm -hmm. uh, from my sidewalk and um, got a, a bid from him. Well, the bid was a dollar and a quarter a foot or something like that. Well, it was only 75 feet <laughs> and I thought to myself, well, gee, you know, with a shovel I can do it in maybe a half hour, in which I did. Yes. And I said, uh, well, Gene, thanks very much, but uh, I don't think I'll have it done. Mm -hmm. And I've oftentimes thought if I would have had him done, he would not have been at that next yes, job the next day. Yes. But um, it was horrible. Yes, it was. Right. He just died. And he left three lovely daughters, mm -hmm. and his wife was Marilyn, Marilyn. Marilyn Howard. Yes. Marilyn mm -hmm. Howard. Mm -hmm. And um, his, um, was it three daughters or two? Two daughters. Two daughters, right, yeah. two daughters, right. Ann Staub and Trish. Trish Staub. Trish, Beautiful yes. girls. Yes. I had uh, Ann Staub as a... Um, student at the University of Akron. Oh, uh -huh. um, I was a, a consulee. She was a consulee. She was not a mm -hmm. student of mine. Just a lovely, lovely family. Just uh, heartbreaking to have those. And so who were some of the other friends that you had then? Well, the other, some of the other friends I had uh, running around in school was uh, Tom Marin. Tom Marin. James mm -hmm. Kime. Jim Kime, yes. And, and Jim uh, Kime had a sister who, who was um, uh, Jane Kime. Okay, yes. And uh, Jane was married to um, uh, Ira Greiner, mm -hmm. and Jane passed on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was about the only real close friends we had. I tried to be friends with both everybody. You know, oh, you were indeed. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you. What year did you graduate? I graduated in 1954. 54. 54. Mm -hmm. A little bit behind me, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, 1954. Yeah, From there, I went on to. Uh, uh, I enrolled at uh, Hamill Actual Business College in Akron. Mm -hmm. And I stayed there and completed my studies there in, in July of 1957. And then what? So then, uh, well, I see, I, uh, I was working, uh, at that time I was working in 1956, I was working at East Ohio Gas Company in Akron. Mm -hmm. And then from there I, I walked into the funny thing, uh, I walked into the First National Bank one day to see Bill Reimer. But borrowed $800 for a two-year-old car at that time, mm -hmm. bought a, buying off of Norm Boyer. And uh, so... Norm so Boyer had a gas station down south of town. Yes, right, exactly. And he lived uh, right next to Overlook School mm -hmm. on Broad Street, had two daughters. Mm -hmm. uh, Janet was one, uh, the older one was... Um, mm, can't think of it, mm -hmm. but I know them. Yeah. So I walked in and asked, uh, I wanted to borrow some $800 for an automobile at that time, and Bill, of course, I knew uh, Bill... Bill and he knew my family and so forth, and uh, he uh, granted my request and gave me the, my, the money I needed for a car. Probably didn't have to fill out a form either. No, uh, and <laughs> matter of fact, what sticks out today is the fact that uh, after we was all complete, I was getting ready to leave. He says, says "Oh, by the way, do you have a job? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Are you working someplace?" And I said, "Yes, I work in East Texas Gas Gas Company, in Akron." And he said, "You ever consider uh, working at the bank in a bank?" I said, well, I know I've never gotten much consideration. So he said, well, you want to, we said, we're expanding here and so forth. And uh, they were getting ready to move up to the new building next following year. 
So subsequently, that's how I got a job at the bank, uh, First National Bank. So I ended up uh, working there 39 years. And uh, you were not um, the window clerk all 39 years, no, were you? No, I was not, no, no. Tell us a little bit about that succession, the succession of uh, positions you held. Mm -hmm. And then we want to go back to another very important function of your life uh, sometime between graduation and working. Okay. So. Well, I, I started out as a, uh, I started there in January, excuse me, February 1957 at the bank. And uh, I started as a teller and worked at the window for a couple of years. We moved up to the new building there. And, and, and the, but tell us where the older building was. Okay, so the older building was uh, down on the south side of, uh, square. of, uh, of the square. Uh, west side of the road. West side, west side of the side road. Of the street. Mm -hmm. Right now it's uh, next, I guess, to the substation. Something like that, but it's halfway between. Halfway. Uh, they, the the uh, half uh, in the center of the block, that the middle correct. of the block. Yeah. Little, little building right now. I think it's an insurance company in there right now. Mm -hmm. Very very narrow. Yeah, very very narrow. Right. Yeah, it was very crammed when I started mm -hmm. working there. Very. So. Uh, and who were some of the people you worked with when you first started? <clears throat> well, of course, Winford Irwin was uh, in charge mm -hmm. at the bank, and Bill Reimer, and Dwayne Kreider, and Dave Rohr, mm -hmm. and uh, then um, Dave Sprang. Mm -hmm. And, Dave uh, Spring still living, still lives in Wadsworth. Yeah, still in Wadsworth. And Dwayne Kreider still lives in Wadsworth. Right, yes. And um, Linford Irvin, mm -hmm. unfortunately, is gone. But his wife, Frida, is alive. Mm -hmm. She's part of our historical society and a very, very mm -hmm. powerful person in our society. Mm -hmm. I wanted to get her on this program. She won't come. <laughs> but the only thing she has ever consented to do is to sing. And she has a beautiful is singing right? voice. Yes. Right, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I uh, then uh, worked there, and then in 1959. Well, how about some of the clerks? Uh, oh, some of the clerks. Well, let's see. It was Roberta Farr. Farr. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, who was Roberta Farr? The, so we don't get the two mixed. The Roberta. Two. Her maiden name was Santee. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> and whom did she marry? Uh, she married uh, Charles. Charlie Farr. Farr. Charlie Farr. Right. Right. And yeah. Jim Farr married Barb. Um, mm. Roar. 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 Yes. And uh -huh. I'm going to have Jim on the program. Yes. Right. Yeah. And Barb, too, and have them yeah. both of them. So um, she married uh, Charlie Farr, who mm -hmm. was a Wadsworth boy. Mm -hmm. And who else worked there? So we had uh, Marlis, uh, now it's Marlis Smith. I think it was Marlis Hoover at that Hoover time. Hoover at the time, right. Uh, Marlis was from Ripman, wasn't she? Yeah, she was. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she lived in Ripman. Worcester uh, now. Worcester? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they moved to Worcester. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the other ones I uh, worked with. Uh, Ethel Geisinger. Ethel, yes, mm -hmm. Ethel Geisinger, right. She's still living. She's still living. Yes, she's 93 or, oops, better not say that. <laughs> She'll kill me. She's, about, about the, she's older than 80. Mm -hmm. And she um, is at St. Edward's home, but she is in an independent living, and she is extremely independent. And mm -hmm. she won't come on the program either. Is that right? <laughs> uh, this was most I can remember that particular. Uh, there weren't that many more in there. No, there wasn't. There's was only tell maybe us, 15, 16 at the most. At tell us time. a little bit about the, th the people. Tell us a little bit about Linford Irwin and uh, Dwayne Kreider and uh, Dave Sprang uh, and um, uh, Dave Rohr and um, who was the other one? That was about it. Mm -hmm. That was bit. Well, Linford was a very, very wonderful man. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, he uh, very common individual. And uh, I have one thing that sticks out about Linford is the fact that he th always thought that uh, one week's vacation was too much. <laughs> well, he probably never took one. He never took one. No. Right? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we respected that. I mean, he but he was very nice to everybody and uh, very helpful. And of course, Bill Reimer was too. Very intelligent individual. And, uh, Bill's still living. Yes, yeah, still Bill living, right, yes. I had him on the program. Oh, is that right? I missed that one and so forth. Uh, and of course, uh, then, of course, Dave Rohr. Now, Dave was the, the elder statesman. Yeah, he was the elder statesman, right. Dave would be over 100 years old now if you were living, wouldn't he? I would think so. Easily. Yes. Mm -hmm. I would think so. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice person. Very right. reserved and uh, had a lot of wisdom. A lot of respect from that man. Yes, exactly right, yes. Uh, and of course, I had uh, Dwayne Kreider. Dwayne, who was um, at the present time, is probably 72 years of age. Yeah, I think it's right in there. 27, yes. I believe. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. And also, I forgot to mention Bob Miley. Bob Miley. Bob right. Miley. There yeah, we go. Oh, right. I knew there was a fifth oh, one yeah. there. So, so sorry if I missed I knew there were fifth. We had Bob Miley on the program. Yes, I've seen that. I knew program. there was a fifth one. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we got him. He started about six months after I did. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, a very fine individual, yeah. Very oh, for people the, to... um, the the bank people in Wadsworth, uh, mm -hmm. whichever of the two, uh, there are only two banks at the time, yes. 
whichever of the two banks you went to, they're all just really, really mm -hmm. great people. I told this story before, and I think I'll repeat it just because I just, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, you walked in, got $800, and then, oh, by the way, do you have a job? Yeah. <laughs> well, about 35 or 36 years ago, something like that, I walked in, and um, I forgot where it was. Well, it was one of the two banks, and I said, uh, I need uh, $2,000 to build a garage. Mm -hmm. They gave me $2,000. I built the garage, <laughs> never signed anything, so yes. forth. And, but everyone knew everyone else. Oh, yes, and yeah. They knew that they were gonna, and there was never a late payment or anything of this nature. Right. My mother-in-law had a stroke uh, oh, a couple of years ago and is not fully incapacitated, but can't get around very well. Mm. And so Linda, my wife, and I help her on a very, very mm -hmm. regular basis mm -hmm. and some of these kinds of things. One of them, of course, is banking. I still have that much money, obviously, but nonetheless, what little she has uh, requires some uh, readjustments from time to time. Well, she really can't go to the bank because walking is difficult. And mm -hmm. um, then um, once she gets there, she can't stand and all those kinds of things. So I was helping this time. And um, the, uh, she said, now I want you to go to the bank for me, if you will. And the bank is right next door to her, not next door. There's a cemetery, then the bank, maybe mm -hmm. a, 500,000 feet away, something like that. Now, they all know me there, and uh, but I'll call ahead of time. So she called this one person, whatever her name was, and she gave her, says, now this is, um, uh, the, and then she gave the, the telephone, or the uh, bank number, the account number, described me to a T, which was not too terribly flattering, but nonetheless, yeah. she described me to a T, and that I would have these numbers in my hand, and she did everything perfectly. So I went over there, and I waited in this maze of lines, and there was no one there, but the maze of lines. <laughs> yeah. And there's this little snip of a girl, and not that that's a sexist remark, but that's exactly what she was. She's sitting there, but, well, not even looking at me. She says, can I help you? And I said, yes. And I told her who I was, and I gave her all these numbers and so forth. I said, a number such and such on this bank account, and I want to do this. My mother-in-law just called you and so forth. And, and when it was all over with, the only thing that she could say, whatever. <laughs> oh, that was not the banks with which we were familiar when yeah, we would no, go in. No, no. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I will never forget the time when I walked. I lost my, my checkbook and I walked in there. And I'm not going to mention her name because she's still living and she would be very much embarrassed by this. <laughs> but she scolded me and I, stood, and I took it. <coughs> she said, you are not to lose your checkbook. You take better care of your checkbook. And, wow. wow. I stood there and I took it. Now, they yeah. were, bankers were people to be respected and they were very respected. Oh, yes, yes. So. You know the old image about the bankers always just sit in the front row at church every Sunday. You know? That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Very reserved. So how about then going from the time that you were clerk all the way up then? Well, I, uh, uh, 1959 then, I got a greeting from Uncle Sam. Well, we, a lot of us did. Yeah, so I spent two years in the uh, uh, armed forces and uh, come back. And they, exactly two years, wasn't exactly it? Exactly two years, you're right. Mine was two years minus four hours. Oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I went in August the 4th, 1959, and got discharged August the 4th, 1961. Well, not, not the third? Uh, so I, I went on the July 10th. It could have been. Yeah, I been went on third, July 10th of 1952 yeah. and got out on July 9th of 1954 right, yeah. because right. the, the, they counted 730 yeah. days. Right, exactly. Was your term. Right. And uh, I got out four hours before I was inducted. So So then I uh, come back then and I worked uh, as a, a teller supervisor at that time. And then over the course years, the, those were the days that we... Uh, uh, wore about 15 hats, and we shoveled snow, we changed light bulbs, we cleaned the basement, everything. you know, we did everything, you know. And I worked uh, there, uh, then I went into the loan administration area, was a loan, uh, loan officer for about four years, and then went back into operations, and uh, was there for a few years, and was more or less in charge of a couple of the branches we had. We had a branch in Medina, and a branch in Brunswick at that time. And you're in charge of those? Yes, right, basically. Tell us where the branch was in Brunswick and where the branch was in Medina. Okay, in Medina, the branch is on South Court Street, okay. about three miles south of this, uh, Medina. Mm -hmm. uh, That's Route 42, isn't it? Route 42, mm -hmm. right, on the south side. And then the Brunswick was on Route 42 north of... Uh, 82 there. Uh, 303. Oh, excuse me, yeah. 303. Yeah. 303, yeah. Down there about four miles. Mm -hmm. And so, so that time, then we, uh, 
Now, you were in charge of both of them at the same time. Yes, yeah, right. You're right, exactly right. And you had people working for, the, for you there? Uh, yes, in the branches, yes. And, uh, but they were not from Wadsworth? No, they were not so from we Wadsworth. Not no, they okay. were nobody All from right. Wadsworth, right, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so then, uh, the last number of years, it became a, what they call personal bankers. They had a realignment of duties, and uh, after Huntington, uh, more or less, uh, out of the Columbus, we became a, a branch office of the Huntington Bank shares. And at that time, then, uh, I'd become a personal, what they call a personal banker, which they have today. And I finished out my career then in that area. As a personal banker. Right. They don't have such things as bank presidents in Wall Street no. anymore. No. Or vice presidents. No. Or anything no. like that. Or cashiers or treasurers or anything no, like that. No. They, um, and uh, with that has gone a great deal of the legacy, which I think can be associated with banking and bankers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's that uh, trust. I will never forget the time that I was... Um, in a store, not here, but in a store, and a store clerk um, took my um, credit card, <laughs> and he, this was before we had that thing that makes the credit cards, and he wrote, wrote down all the numbers and so forth and so on, <laughs> and then he said, do you have any identification? I said, yes, <laughs> and I gave my identification. Uh, do you have a driver's license? Yes, I gave my driver's license, and all kinds of things. The owner was standing behind him, a very shrewd man. He said to this boy, within my earshot, he said, all of those numbers don't mean a damn thing. He <laughs> says, look at his eyes, and that'll tell you. So I could tell from the back room that the man was OK. Otherwise, I wouldn't let you take those numbers down. I heard the whole thing. <coughs> we have lost a great deal of that. Oh, sure. Personal touch is gone. The yeah. personal touch is gone. Right, exactly. As a matter of fact, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think that I'm going to become famous by saying we're going to get rid of all of the, the uh, automated telephones. It, I, I yes. dread calling on some of the automated telephones because, you know, by the for, for instance, uh, you call a, a huge conglomerate or something like that. It takes you 20 minutes to get through the, the intelligence test. You know, press 1, press 2, press 5, and then when you press 5, yes. you press 3, press 2. <laughs> well, I had Just a, too much. I had an experience in that uh, too long ago, Bob talking about the telephones. Uh, of course, we're subscribed to the Wadsworth Cable, mm -hmm. and uh, I had some interference with my television during the snowstorm back in the first part of January, and it was so nice to be able to call the communications department. And get a human being and I talked to Judy, right. uh, Judy, yeah, and uh, yes, and she... Judy, great. your neighbor. Huh? Yes. Judy Williams, Judy, yeah, Judy, yeah. Judy Surface Williams, right. your neighbor, right. And, and she so nice. knows what she's talking about. Yes, That's right. The and thing. she was so nice on the phone. She says, uh, when do you want to be there? You know, when can we come and look mm -hmm. at your problem? But it was so nice to talk to somebody on the telephone. And uh, yeah, she's when they girl. left, they apologized because they couldn't find a problem right away. But it was so nice to be able to talk to somebody. Well, the, the other nice thing about, well, I, I interrupt you. Yes, right, too. Okay. The other nice thing about Wadsworth, you just, just reminded me of it, is that um, we have a, our two of our kids live in the East Coast. We mm -hmm. go out there, well, not mm -hmm. too frequently, but we go out there once a month or so. And um, the one who lives in the state of Delaware mm -hmm. um, isn't in such a situation so bad as the one who lives in, in New York. Mm -hmm. um, not that there's, their living situations are different or bad, but the fact is that the human beings with whom you have to deal mm -hmm. are so anti civil. Yeah. <laughs> they just are anti-civil. Yes. I mean, they don't have that civility that we have. Uh, that's why I appreciate the Judy Williamses of this world who, mm -hmm. when you call her up, mm -hmm. A, she, uh, she may not feel good, All right. but you're important enough for her to say, yeah. Bob, uh, when do you want us to come up there? She right, puts on exactly. a smile for And that's throughout all of Wadsworth. And that's exactly. the nicest thing. That's one of the reasons why people don't move out of Wadsworth. Yes. That's why they move into Wadsworth. Uh, and I'm so proud of Wadsworth, of course, being a native, and, and uh, I've talked over the years, a number of people have moved away because of job transfers and yes. so forth. They've come back and they said, there's nothing like the city of Wadsworth, you know. I went to a store in New York <coughs> where my son Jerry, our son Jerry lives, and it was one of the chain stores, you know, mm -hmm. that sells um, uh, everything, uh, plumbing supplies, electrical, all those other kinds of things. And there's a man there. It turned out that I, that I, I became a friend of his because I was determined that I wanted to be a friend uh, because I was so angry at the way he was treating people, you know, just really, very gruffly. Mm -hmm. And, and um, I, I about dropped my teeth <coughs> when I heard him say, one man said, well, I don't think that's what, he, he said, don't think. I just told you what you want. <laughs> well, that's not the way to talk no, to people. No, no, no. So I, you know, I, I, I think that um, 
you make a very good point when you say it was nice to talk to a person who was nice to talk to. And that was exactly. Good. Yeah. So that's great, Judy. Yeah. Um, uh, there are a lot of Judys in town, but she was a good. She's a good one. Mm -hmm. um, Bob, uh, be, uh, before we run out of time, we want to talk about Corny Kalibetzer, mm -hmm. whose name we never knew except for Corny, what mm -hmm. he did, and how he became mm -hmm. in, involved, and who those people were with whom mm -hmm. he was involved, and so forth. Tell us about that. <clears throat> well, my father uh, was born in uh, Doylestown, 1904. So he would be 95 years old now. Right. He died when? About uh, 1979, August, uh, October 1979. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was born and raised in, uh, excuse me, born in Dallas Town. He, and uh, he had twin sisters, Della and Stella. Della and Stella. Della and Stella, right. And he had a, a brother who died at a very young age. I'm not quite sure, he was very young. And subsequently, they moved to Wadsworth, and they lived on, uh, on East Street, corner East and Park Avenue, mm -hmm. or excuse me, Park Street. Park Street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, Dad at that time had to uh, uh, drop out of school at the age of 14. Very common. Very common. Very common. Because of, of Dad was his, his father, who my grandfather was uh, sick and, and had heart problems at that time. And mother, his mother was also bedridden. So I guess I understand that uh, Tommy Lucas had to get him out of school, get him dismissed from school. So at the age of 14, he... And Tommy Lucas at that time was the marshal. Marshal, right. And he was the one who would attest to the fact right. that uh, he was uh, old enough, to, uh, he, that he was eligible to be out of school. Right, yes, right. And so at that, he had to go to work at age 14. And he uh, went to work uh, start cutting meat at that age, age 14. Where, do you remember? Uh, at that time it was the Overholt. And Freeborn. Yeah, I think at that time it was just Overholt. Just Overholt. Just Overholt, okay. Overholt mm -hmm. grocery store. That would have been in uh, the scene, uh, age 14, uh, 1918. Then. 1918. Mm -hmm. And then he, uh, he worked there until uh, his mother and father passed away in 1924, 1925. So at that time, then at 1925, 1926, then he and Don Good decided to take a trip to California. So they spent a whole year. So Don was his friend, and Don was Bob his was friend. your friend. Yes, right? Don was his friend, yeah. And uh, Dad was, at that point, he had taken care of not only before when his mother and father was bedridden, he had uh, one uh, sister, Della, was uh, crippled. I think, I don't know what... Uh, happened at that point, but she was crippled, bedridden. So uh, he had to put her into the Bedina County home at that point. And uh, so anyway, they spent a year out of California, and he came back. And at that time, when he came back, he went to work for Smith Cleaners, Smith yes. and Son mm -hmm. Cleaners, dry cleaners. And where were they? They were on uh, Talbert Street. Talbert Street, which right. Which is the street down from Euclid Avenue. And it was on the south side of the road. That is correct, mm -hmm. right, yeah. About two or three hundred feet up from High Street. That is correct. West of High Street. Mm -hmm. and then in 1928, uh, he and mother got married in June 2nd, 1928. And uh, he uh, continued to work at Smith Dry Clearance until 1931. And, 68 uh, years ago. Yeah. Then he went to work for uh, Alls. Meat market. Meat market. Which was on point. the south side of College Street, uh, approximately uh, 50 feet from Watrusa. Right, yeah. Then he worked there, I think, until 1931, and then he went to uh, work for, uh, that time it was Freeburn and Overholt. Overholt and Freeburn. Right, he mm -hmm. stayed in that uh, same uh, building down there where they're and, totally and do you retired. remember the Overholts and the Freeborns? Do I remember them? Uh, vaguely, yes. Mm -hmm. Very. Jack over. I knew Jack. I didn't know uh, Merle Freeman. Merle Freeman, yes, I knew of him. I knew Jack better, right, yes. Mm -hmm. I'm very fine. Jack's individual. children were on the program. Three of his four girls were on the program. Yes. Uh -huh. um, earlier this year. Mm -hmm. And um, that store then uh, is still there. Yes, but, you're right. Um, but then there's still a grocery store, isn't yeah. it? So he cut meat down there then until 19, he retired about 1974 mm -hmm. when mother got sick. So. But uh, a lot of stories there when the father was cutting meat, and uh, one of the stories that uh, was uh, always had, I can remember, kind of family disagreement was, mother always would uh, make out a grocery list on Saturday noon when he came home for lunch, 
and pick up the groceries, and especially for meat for a Sunday meal. And uh, he come home on Saturday night, and mother says, well, where's my rump roast? And he said, oh, I sold it. <laughs> <laughs> and his mother said, well, I get the, we get the leftovers, obviously. Huh? Mm -hmm. He said, that's all we had left in the cooler was a piece of uh, maybe chuck roast or something like that, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I can remember that a number of times. And also, Dad uh, was very accommodating. I'm proud to say that because I can remember a number of times on Sunday morning, lots of times the phone would ring and somebody would be on the phone and say, uh, i am um, got uh, unexpected company coming in today, can, uh, can you get me a, a beef roast or a standing rib roast or whatever? And Dad would uh, go down and open up the door and get a that. pine quarter out of the core and c cut off the roast for him and, and deliver it to them and a number of times like that. Or if, Occasionally, if they didn't think the meat smelled quite right or something mm -hmm. like that, you'd go down and get, cut them another fresh uh, what, roast. And what a completely different uh, yeah. era. Yes. Um, <clears throat> I told you about my mother-in-law. Uh, we have to do her grocery shopping, too. So I went grocery shopping for her one day. This was oh, within the past month. I've forgotten exactly when it was. And um, my mother-in-law is very frugal. and She reads every, well, she, has this, she can't do anything but read. I mean, mm -hmm. she can't get around too well. So she was um, reading all of the food ads, and she said, now, get me this, and this, and this is on sale, and so forth. This was uh, very close to 10 o'clock <coughs> Saturday night, in hmm. one of those all-night stores. Hmm. And I went in there, and um, I knew that the sale didn't start until midnight that night. Mm -hmm. They would not sell me oh. that on oh, sale two hours before. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Yeah. And here your father would go on a Sunday, he'd get me a rib roast and so forth. Right, and so exactly, on. yeah. So he worked a lot of long hours, uh, you know, of course they all did back then, you know. When Everyone the stores. did. Mm -hmm. He went to work about 7, 7.30 in the morning, always about 6 o'clock at night before he got home, and Monday through Saturday. Who was another butcher who used to work with him? Well, uh, of course, uh, recently it was uh, Rick Miller. But before that, in the olden days, in the 30s? Uh, I don't really recall. I had Mr. Wolford. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. That's right, exactly. I forget exactly. his first name right now, but uh, he, she was on the program not long ago. Yeah, she was on the program. Uh, yeah. I, I, I know his name. It'll yeah, come to come me in a second. Um, one of the distinguishing factors, well, I shouldn't say distinguishing, mm -hmm. coincidental factors, my mother, of course, was born in Italy. She mm -hmm. came to the United States in uh, 1920 and came to Wadsworth on July 10th. She and my parents, my parents and mm -hmm. two brothers, the third one, nor, nor I, neither of the two of us was born at that time. But uh, she came on July 10th, 1926. And of course, one of the first things she had to do was go to the grocery store. Mm -hmm. The first place she went, um, not that week, because uh, women of those days uh, didn't get out very much. The men would do the shopping, right. have to walk to town and so forth. But when she finally went to town one time, the first place she went was to the Overholt and Freeborn IGA, <laughs> and the first person she saw and talked to was your father. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and she was always, and she was always very fond of him. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, if Corny said it, it was fine. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. and then Corny, okay, your father, then occasionally would deliver groceries for yes, Overholt and Freeborn as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They had a gray 1939 Ford truck. Yes, mm -hmm. I can remember it. And um, Dave Fleckner used to work for them as well. Okay. Not Dave, but um, yeah, Dave. Oh, yeah. Dave Fleckner, mm -hmm. yeah, worked for them, uh, mm -hmm. driving a truck in 1939. Mm -hmm. uh, those are the, the... Now, before we forget a very important feature here of your entire life, mm -hmm. let's go to it right now, and then we'll okay. come to some of those other kinds of things. And that is, you said your mom and dad were married. Mm -hmm. Well, did you do a little bit of that too? I mean, well, <laughs> yes, um, yes. I and when were you married? Whom did you marry? Okay. How did you uh, marry all of those things? I met uh, my wife, whose uh, name was Car uh, Carol Foster. Foster, Carol Foster. From Carol where? Foster. She uh, they lived a family lived up on Medina County Line Road, just north of Mount Zingli Church. North of Mount Zingli and Church she, on the west side of the road. Right, exactly. And they, she graduated from Highland High School in 1953. Mm-hmm. And we met uh, about 1955. Uh, she was, uh, started singing in the choir at the Trinity Church. And I was uh, help uh, ushering and doing and at that time. And our eyes just kind of uh, caught each other. And subsequently, uh, we uh, were together. And we got married in uh, 
October 1957, mm -hmm. in Trinity United Church of Christ. So and, uh, you've been married now for 42 years. 42 so years, yes. Pretty 40, soon it will be, be 42, 42 years. 42 years, right. And then did that produce any children? Yes, we, uh, my oldest daughter is uh, Elizabeth uh, Kalbetzer, uh, Snyder now. She's married. Whom did she marry? She married uh, Douglas Snyder. Now, are the Snyders from the Trinity United Church of Christ? Uh, no, no, no. no. Uh, his father was John Snyder. John Snyder? John Snyder. From out west of town? Uh, they live up the, on uh, north of Wadsworth on uh, Bridge Road, just north of... Uh, okay, no, it's yeah. about the same Snyder. A lot of Snyders yeah. around. His mother lives down here on North Party Street. Okay. Yeah. And what's her first name? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, you've got me right now. Oh. I'm not quite sure. That's all right. I can't remember. It will come to me. You know? I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to figure out what Snyder's they are. Uh, see, John Snyder, his, his grandmother just passed away just a couple of years ago. She was 97, 98 years old. Just down here on um, North Party Street. Bertha. Bertha Snyder. Oh, yes, Bertha Snyder. yes, yes, yes. Bertha. Okay, I know who she is. Yes, right, right yeah. Mm -hmm. Bertha Snyder. Bertha, uh, uh, Bertha Snyder died not too long ago. No, uh, no Bertha, Bertha's still alive. Yeah, her mother passed away, Pastor. Pardon uh, me? Her mother passed away. Uh, Bertha Snyder's mother passed away just a couple years ago. Yes, yes. right. But Bertha is still alive. Yes, right. Uh -huh. And she's quite up in the years. Yes, right. Exactly. And, and is that uh, is that your daughter-in-law's uh, daughter, son-in-law's mother? Yes, right. Exactly. Right. Uh, well, no, that's the son-in-law's grandmother. Son-in-law's grandmother. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. I know Bertha Snyder. Yeah. Okay. I know, I know what Snyder it is. Okay. okay. Then, right. uh, so, uh, uh, daughter Beth, and they have two fine... Uh, daughter... Beth. 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 Yeah. Beth. The mm -hmm. oldest daughter. She's 38. And they have two fine daughters, uh, Joel and uh, Rachel. They're in high school right now. They're, junior high, they're in uh, junior and freshman. And you, that's that's the Elizabeth's children. Yeah, Elizabeth's okay. Children. Then I have Leanne. Uh, she's 31 years old. Leanne, L-E-A-N-N? L-I-A-N-E. L-I-A-N-E. Right. Leanne, okay. French name. We always have to make sure they're spelled because people will spell them their right. own ways, as you know. So she married, uh, <coughs> she married uh, Mark Berlin. Lee Wolford. Hey, Lee Wolford, there you go. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, there, Lee. Uh, Leanne married uh, Mark Berlin. And one of the Berlins. One of the Berlins here in town. Now, what's Berlin? Well, his father's name is, uh, hmm, how oh, gee, many crickets. <laughs> Live up on North Lyman Street. I'm going to interview one of the women Berlin. Okay. Later on. Yeah. Uh, I'll think about it just a minute here. Bob Berlin? No. Uh, but the, the well, Berlin family here in town? Yes, oh, yes, okay. yes, no. yes. Okay. And uh, so the, they have uh, two daughters. Uh, uh, Ashley is six years old, and uh, Brady is just uh, soon be two years old. He'll be born. In my, he was born on my birthday. He'll be two years old. Oh. Mm -hmm. And uh, and they both uh, they both families live here in Wadsworth. Well, you're lucky. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're lucky. Um, I always think of George um, George Meyer, uh -huh. who's. Um, Every, all three of his children live here in Wadsworth. Well, two, two live in Wadsworth, I believe. Mm -hmm. No, one lives in Wadsworth, one lives in, in east of Cleveland, one lives in Columbus. And that's not too bad, but then one lives in Australia. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, right. Well, yes. That's a fur piece to go, to yeah. go see their children. And there's nothing more important than being able to be with your children. And my wife works, uh, she was, of course, a uh, homemaker from until the kids got older, and then she went to work for the schools. She's working, and she's... Uh, Payroll supervisor for the school. She does the payroll. And Wadsworth? Yeah, Wadsworth. Oh, and Wadsworth, really? right, yeah. Mm, great. And where does she, where's her office down at the? Uh, administration office down at College Street. Administration office, College right. Street. Yes, uh huh. Now, there are many other things that you want to tell us, and um, I always encourage you, uh, the people, to bring their <coughs> lists and, and those kinds of things, the pictures. And I want to get those in before we quit, so mm -hmm. quickly tell us whatever it is that you want to well, tell us I about had that, some and of then the, some of those pictures. Some of the uh, uh, people I had uh, my father worked with at the uh, Oberhoven and Free in later uh, Abrams IGA, mm -hmm. I, uh, it was Harry Weldy and his wife. Yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Gene Allen. Gene, oh my heavens, yes. Right. Yes, and uh, Nina Foreman. Nina Foreman, that's right, too. And Edna Holman, who is Edna my, Holman, yeah, yes, right, my, uh, uh, lived on Broad Street. Yeah, she was my aunt. And now, how's she your aunt? 
Uh, her, uh, Edna and my uh, brother Ruth were sisters. Oh, is that right? Yes. Uh, uh, she was an Edna Cox. She was a she, Cox? Yes, right. She was a Cox. I didn't know that. Uh, yes, Edna uh, Holbun, yes. yes uh, was, her husband used to work down at the Magic Company. That is correct. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh -huh. And of course, uh, Rick Miller and, and Lee Wolford. And Lee Wolford so and um, uh, Merle Cartwright, too. Or, uh, yeah, Merle Cartwright. Mm -hmm. worked Merle in there. Cartwright, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I brought uh, just uh, something I got out of some of mother's uh, scrapbook the other day, just some of the old uh, uh, businesses in town. This is something from Junior Class Play in 1924. Come Out of the Kitchen by A.E. Thomas, <laughs> royalty paid. The High School Auditorium, Wednesday, April 25th, class of 1924. Yes. And let's see what some of the businesses were yes, those days. Yes. I have some I didn't recognize. The Music Shop by Clyde Oppinger, yes, I know that mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. Was with Iron Supply. I don't know that one, uh, unless that would be up there. Oh, yes, I think it was up there on Albert mm -hmm. Street. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Strand Theater, of course, we know. Rain's Grocery, we know mm -hmm. that one, yes, don't we? Sir. And um, here we have uh, Jesse Huntsberger in the program, Doris Kreider in the program, Margaret Wynn uh, is in the program, Thelma Way, who was the, Schaefer. Thelma Schaefer, mm -hmm. now dead, Alva Buffington in the program. And then the Bernard Hamilton Company for a. Um, um, this is this is not uh, yeah this is a jewelry store as I mm -hmm. know yes mm -hmm. and uh, let's see uh, Gensimer Brothers mm -hmm. right we've had uh, the grandson of the Gensimers right, over yeah. here right here mm -hmm. now uh, <coughs> also now in the program were Clarence Fixler Robert Geisinger Leonard Kale he was one of our mm -hmm. people here Leonard is now eighty five years right. old mm -hmm. Rodney Ware Cleo Wolf mm -hmm. and Harry Crawford. Then we had the Good and Bixler Funeral Home, mm -hmm. which of course is on the mm -hmm. north side of College Street, about uh, a thousand feet west of the square. Somewhere. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Klein's Men and Boys Store, mm -hmm. that was on the east side yes, of the, right. <clears throat> of the uh, of Main Street, uh, just a couple of doors up from the high school, mm -hmm. from the old high mm -hmm. school. Colonial Dining Room, I'm not familiar with that. The Rexford Drug Store, yes. Mm -hmm. Sears and D Deerhammer. Um, they had drugs, books, and, and pictures. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bender and Overholt, mm -hmm. uh, that's another one. They, had, they, own, they ground their own peanut butter. <laughs> and um, Wines the Tailor. Wines. We, yes, we had his son-in-law here, oh, who, was, right? who was uh, Bill, um, um, mm, come on, uh, Bill uh, Heil. Bill, Bill Heil. Heil. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mary, uh, Mary <coughs> was uh, his daughter. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the Falcon Heart, I'm not familiar with that one. Uh, the Wazza Savings and Trust, we mm -hmm. surely know about that one. Mm -hmm. And the um, Kreider's Dry Goods, the GC, CG Kreider and Company. And uh, Reichard Cole, yes, mm -hmm. we know that one. And J.R. Crable Groceries, right, mm -hmm. we know that one too. Princeton Keller, which of yes. course became Prince Keller and Coons. Coons. Mm -hmm. C.B. Curtis, we surely do. Alan Hartzell Dibble, mm -hmm. they've been around for a thousand years. Wolf's Dry Goods mm -hmm. and um, Smith Cleaners. Mm -hmm. Dutt Sales, they had a shoe store. I don't know, didn't know about that one. And uh, Curtis and Miller uh, on South Main Street. They must have been the people with the uh, clothes. My mother, of course, when she was in high school, she, uh, of course, like a lot of people, worked for Brennan's Brenny. Everyone for Brenny, Everyone, right. She mm -hmm. all detailed and she would uh, he let them off when of, they had a player basketball game at the high school, and then she uh, would run up and attend the uh, soda fountain up there. Right. And mm -hmm. Worked for a number of years there. This, I thought, maybe uh, uh, was a dedication program, the dedication of the uh, high school. Uh, uh, Wadsworth High School dedicatory exercises, Thursday and Friday, October 5th and 6th, 1922, mm -hmm. of the new auditorium, new which, auditorium right. Worked, which is now being renovated. Right, exactly. Oh, this is great. We'll just take a quick picture of this one uh, to show what it is, and then we will um, uh, just read it here. Uh, the piano solo was by Hugh Hartzell, the vocal solo by Vida Crable, and we had a one act play called Max Maury's, M A U R E Y apostrophe S, Rosalie. Madame Ball was Doris Kreider. Monsieur Ball was, or Madame Ball, I guess. Monsieur, this is what they do with French. Uh, Monsieur, Monsieur Ball was Carl Harder. And Carl is 93 but years old. Unfortunately, years. I understand he just passed away yesterday. Oh, I didn't know that. Yes, oh, I was sorry. told that, yes. Uh -huh. I didn't know that. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
and Rosalie was Irene Forer. And uh, the um, trio was um, with Miss Swigert, Roselle Seiler, and Mr. Rada. Mr. Rada was a piano teacher. Yes, uh -huh. And the vocal solo was Dorothy Wright. And I believe that Dorothy Wright became Dorothy Rohr. Is that right? Could, yeah, I, guess, I yes. think so, yes. Uh -huh. Saxophone solo by Clyde, Oppling Clyde Opplinger, and a piano solo by Miles Shapiro. Now, this was the, the picture of the school. Um, cost of the building and equipment, $239,000. <laughs> you can't even get an architectural drawing there for oh, now. Right. And the architect was Vernon Redding and Associates, the general contractor, Carmichael Construction, Building <coughs> planned April 1920. Hmm. A.D. Welker was the president of the Board of Education. W.B. Lee was vice president. And on the board member, the board members were A.J. Crable, Dr. M.W. Everhard, O.L. Nolf, he was a jeweler, hmm. uh, C.E. Holbein was the clerk, and A.W. Elliott was the superintendent of schools. Additional rooms available <coughs> for school use, 22. Seating capacity of the auditorium, 1135. Gymnasium floor 50 by 70. Building dedicated October 1922. And then they have the, the board members listed mm -hmm. again. And the program for the dedication went something like this. Music was by the high school orchestra with Clyde Opplinger as the director. Mm -hmm. Invocation by Reverend E. Ezekiel. The address by A.W. Elliott, who was the superintendent of schools from 1914 to 1921. Music by the high school and departmental chorus, Herbert Rada, the director. Address was given by William Henry McMaster, president of Mont Union College in Alliance, Ohio. The audience sang America, and the benediction was Dr. C.B. Etter. Mm -hmm. This is just absolutely priceless. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll treasure that. Mm -hmm. We're going to run out of time here unless we get a few other things quickly into our. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about um, your wife and. Um, um, what um, you say that she was a homemaker and then she mm -hmm. worked as a, when did she become involved with the schools what does she do and so forth well okay she uh, when she after we got married she of course worked a number of years a couple of years for the citizens for Tom, Tom Saylor's Citizen Bank mm -hmm. uh, as secretary and then uh, of course then uh, uh, we had uh, children she stayed home as a homemaker until uh, about 20 years ago and she went to work for the school uh, for Bill Heil mm -hmm. And uh, done the payroll, and she, which she's still doing right now. And uh, is she older or younger than you? Uh, she was uh, a little bit uh, older than I am. She was born in uh, uh, May of eighteenth, nineteen thirty-five. In other words, she's about eight. eight yeah, about uh, ten months older. Ten months older than you are. So you married older. an older woman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. But uh, so we've uh, it's uh, been. Very nice. Oh, Very I'm sure nice. that is. Uh, the other thing about your grandchildren, mm -hmm. you have to name your grandchildren and tell us what they do and so forth, you're, particularly the two girls, the older oh. ones uh, who are in school, because yeah. they will they will uh, record this in their memories forever. And if you forget them, uh, okay. Okay, Bob, my, my you're grandchildren. Done. Okay, my grandchildren, uh, Joe, he's uh, Joe Snyder, he's uh, a junior in high school. And he plays uh, soccer and wrestles. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then there's uh, Rachel. She's a, f a freshman, and she's very uh, talented in s playing soccer and uh, runs track. Very two fine girl kids. And then uh, Ashley. She's six years old, and uh, she's in first grade at Rymer Road Baptist Christian. School. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we had the pastor of that church on oh, John yes. Powell. Yes. Then, what a great guy. Yeah, he's very fine. And then uh, Brady, he's only uh, he'll one be of our two favorites. years old in, in, uh, on my birthday, April the 1st. April 1st. Right. Uh -huh. Now, you mentioned uh, a very sad occasion. They said that um, that Carl Harder died mm -hmm. yesterday. Uh, yes, I understand, early yesterday morning. But, so uh, we're, we're talking Carl. now then, so for historical evidence, uh, Carl Harder died then on February 16th, 16. 1999. Mm-hmm. Well, it's a real sad day for Wadsworth. Yes, right, yes. It's one of those things that um, will happen to all of us. We hate to see it happen. Yeah, I respected Carl very much. Oh, he was I a great him, person. Uh, so we glad we got him. We grew up in church together with Trinity United yeah. Church of Christ. Uh, so I'm so glad we had an opportunity. Mm -hmm. 
Well, unfortunately, we've come to the end of our hour, Bob. You have done a beautiful job of bringing us up to date on the Kalibitzer family mm -hmm. and what you did, what your father did. We've had so many references to your father and so many references mm -hmm. to you and the bank and so forth. You, um, you certainly represent a fine portion of Wadsworth history and legacy, and we're grateful to you for that, and Wadsworth is very proud to have had you as one of us.